I'm a manual source and this is my creative inventory. Starting off with music because it's what inspires me the most and the artist who inspires me the most is Childish Gambino aka Donald Glover. Gambino's music videos have interesting visuals consisting mainly of surreal slash afro surreal nature. Director Hiro Mirai is a longtime collaborator with Gambino working on music videos like This Is America, Sober, Telegraph Ave, and Sweatpants just to name a few. Gambino and Mirai craft their visuals making them feel more like short films rather than music videos. No matter what you say, what you do. In one of my favorite music videos by Gambino, here in Sweatpants, we see Gambino sit down, everything seems normal, but besides Gambino as someone who looks exactly like him, throughout the entire video Gambino is walking through a diner, taking a seat, getting back up to continue through the diner on a loop like Groundhog's Day, with each loop getting more out of hand. Lately in his discography, Gambino's videos have referenced important and timely topics within the subtext to celebrate black artists, stars, and culture. In his most influential video to date, This Is America, blew up upon release. The subject matter highlights the black experience in America, where he takes his biggest dive into the Afro-surrealism motif yet. This video is almost one entire take, with the camera work and transitions coming together to give off a feel of one continuous shot. What is your name? Up next, Tyler Crater. You're wonderful to gaze at. Now, Tyler has been an inspiration of mine for the past decade. I love the visuals he creates. They more often than not enter the realm of complete surrealism, so wild and vivid, almost taking on a character itself. Tyler also creates interesting camera angles, like this crane shot right here, which had a rig specifically made for this shot. This is a clip from an experimental film I made that is heavily influenced by Tyler. The deep dialogue, the vibrant color splash throughout. It's a lot like his earlier work, which has had a fair amount of influence on the style of my own work. In 2019, he took on the character Igor and he just ran with it throughout that era of his music. Looking through Tyler's discography, you could see him create and envelop different personas and use them as catalysts to tell narratives from his songs, music videos, and other media. Tyler's ability to creatively communicate narratives in multiple forms and show you something you've never seen before, and if you have seen it before, it's done in a way that feels completely new in it itself. Last up for music is ASAP Rocky. My favorite aspect about his videos are the transitions. Again, the visuals like Gambino and Tyler are greatly done. Rocky as well always brings intriguing visuals into each of his videos. What separates him from the previous two are his transitions. The style is completely different, whereas Gambino and Tyler would use more film conventional transitions. Rocky uses more experimental techniques. As an example, you'll have a seamless transition. A stationary object will carry one clip from another, creating a continuous scroll for the entire video, as if you're flipping through a photo album. In the past couple years, he's really shined with his most recent work. His transitions layered with the unique stylized visuals he crafts for his videos really has the gears turning in my head as an editor, creating the desire to present my work as creatively and for a better lack of words myself as possible. Moving on to films, Jordan Peele's Get Out. Now, everything Peel has done with Get Out inspires me. It's such an amazing movie. You know what I'm saying? Peel uses every single line of dialogue to hint at something that's coming up. There's something ominous happening, and Peel wants you to know. Berlin Olympics Everything, and I mean everything, has layered meaning. There's nothing wasted in this film. The dialogue, visuals, music, set design, and wardrobe. Everything has its purpose. Black dude comes along, proves him wrong. In front of it's what makes this film truly amazing and enjoyable. For your dad, though. Yeah. He almost got over it. <laughs> the second film I want to talk about is Waves, written and directed by Trey Edward Schultz. What inspires me about this film is simply the writing. One aspect of Schultz's writing is that he writes in songs for exact moments. He knows precisely when he wants the visuals to match up with the music, 
And that's something I inspired her to do, and I've done a little bit in my own writing. In this scene, the protagonist is texting back and forth with his girlfriend. And at first, it's a nice calming song, but as we progress, it gets very sour very quick, turning all the way up to 11. And the way the song is blocked, it highlights and invokes more emotion. Now lastly, on to television. The first series I'm going to be talking about is my favorite, Atlanta created by Donald Glover. I love Atlanta because it does things like this. Giving real reactions that characters would actually have and not be afraid to talk about current issues. In this scene, you see two people on completely ends of a spectrum who would normally disagree with each other, actually agreeing. And then mainstream media or personalities trying to keep these two separated. What? Atlanta is able to jump between comedy and drama. The way the show switches, you really never know what's going to happen next until you start to understand the character that is the show. And even then, you still get surprised here and there. Like that episode being a satire and this one being a horror. Uh, I'm here for the... For the uh, pick. Was that Mr. Wonder? In the car. The character Darius was terrified like any normal person would be in that situation. Continuing their partnership, Mariah directed most of the episodes in the series as well as this one. Mariah has the camera jump back and forth between Darius's perspective and someone else's perspective, creating the element that he's being watched the entire time he's in the house. What are you doing up here? The next series we're going to take a look at is Euphoria. Euphoria as a series has such out there visuals that inspires me to think outside the box. I love this opening right here, seeing the visuals in their eye, the flashes of color, it highlights how they are feeling and their thoughts. The entire show is like this, sprinkled into each episode. In the pilot episode, the main character, Rue, is on a set that is physically turning on her after snorting some drugs in a bathroom at a party. It's crazy the stuff that the show pulls off. Always finding a new and fresh way to throw visuals at you. The season two premiere, series creator Sam Levinson had this old disposable camera flash photography sequence with the main cast. Levinson really wanted to give off the theme of being at a party that's gone on way too long for this season within this sequence. Can we not talk about that? Why? The last series we're gonna be taking a look at is Fleabag. The only thing harder than having to tell your super high-powered, perfect, anorexic, rich super sister that you've run out of money is having to ask her to bail you out. Can I get you anything? No, thanks. I'm good. Baby Waller Bridge is on point with the sharp writing mixed with witty and hysterical situations in this dark comedy she's helped. Are you sure I can't get you anything at all? 
one of the best aspects of this series is the narration done by Waller Bridge's main protagonist. I'm just gonna ask her. I'm just gonna ask her. I'm just gonna ask her. I'm just gonna come. Do you need to borrow money? No. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. So business is good then? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's really, really good. Yeah, it's really good. Sounds like it's really good. It is. This has been my creative inventory. Thank you for watching.